Remember the story of Esther? Remember Esther married the king? And there was a decree that all the Jews were going to be killed on a certain day. And Esther had to go in front of her husband. Her husband, who was also what? The king. Now, because she was the queen, did she have the right just to step in front of his throne? No. Oh, she had to make an appointment, right? you got to love that. Oh, let me see if I can pencil you in. <coughs> but there was a serious situation that needed to be dealt with right away. And so she fasted and she prayed and she went before the king, realizing that if he didn't want to throw or the scepter to her, she would what? Die. She would die. This is an earthly king. But God tells us that we, through Christ, can come boldly. And each time we come, he tells us, come boldly. Talk to me. That's the God that we serve. Amen. So let's look at this verse again. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain what? Mercy. Mercy and find what? Grace. grace to help in our time of need. That's Hebrews 4.16. Turn with me to Galatians 5.16. Galatians 5.16 But I say then, what? What's that next word? Walk. Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not do what? Fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Verse 17, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit... You are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evidence. And it goes into what they are. And all these bad things. And he tells us that if you walk in the spirit. Can you actually have victory over all those fleshly things? Yes. How do you walk in the spirit? Say it loud. Allowing the Lord to take control. So this is the $68,000 question. How do you walk in the Spirit? T-D-O-G. Total dependence on God. Listen, you want to know why Jesus hasn't come back yet? It's because we haven't got the victory over all these things that Paul lists there. Right? And because we sin and we confess our sins and He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, He's up in the sanctuary ministering for our sins, right? So if we want him to actually come back, he's going to have to step out of that sanctuary. Which means he can't minister for our sins anymore. So what's that telling you? The great news, brothers and sisters, is is God able to see the beginning from the end? Is God able to see the future? Is his ability to see accurate and clear and true? So, the scriptures have told us that there will come a time before Jesus comes back that God will have a vic uh, people who have gained a victory over this world. Yeah. Do you realize that maybe that could be you and I? Yeah. But it won't happen unless we have total dependence on God. Yeah. Now this has everything to do, and this is where our stock if you guys are writing this down, here's some more text for you to look at. Uh, Psalms 121, verses 1 and 2. Matthew 6. Turn with me. Let's look at that right now. Matthew 6. This will be the last one we look at. Matthew 6. Don't you love baby laughs? Are they the cutest thing ever? Matthew 6. The first verse we're going to look at is verse 25. Do you know what this portion of Scripture is called? No, just this specific portion. This is the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? So, who's speaking here? Jesus. Okay, so, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your what? And what is he talking about? He says, don't worry about what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, or what you will put on. 
Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? That pretty much covers every need that we'll ever have to deal with in this life, right? Why do you go to work, right? Why do I go to work? So I can have a roof over my head and food in my refrigerator, right? Take care of my children, uh, take care of my wife, take care of my pets. But God says, don't worry about those things if you trust in Him. Why? Because He'll take care of it for you. So that's verse 25. Then uh, let's look at verses 33 and 34. What does it say? say what should we do? Where should our gaze and our focus always be? Say that last verse again. Uh, uh, chapter 6, verse 33. Okay. I love this. This, when I first gave my heart to Jesus Christ, this was the text that I first memorized and tried to live my life by. And it was, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Verse 34, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will what? Worry about its own things. Sufficient the day is its own trouble. So two other texts that you can look at will be Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, and Romans chapter 8, verses 28, and then 35 through 39. All right? Look at those. If you wrote these things down, don't just look at it once, but study these scriptures and realize what they're telling you about how we are to have total dependence on God. As I close this morning, I bring all this to you because I want you to think of a few things. One, Jesus had to do what to do all the miracles he did? He had to depend on his Father, right? Jesus said plainly, I do nothing of myself, but he does everything through the power of the Father. So we are told that Christ is the vine, we are the branches. Without him we can do what? Nothing. This, brothers and sisters, is the difference between having faith in Jesus and having the faith of Jesus. For weeks, I've been building up and building up to get you to this point to help you understand there is a difference and what the Adventist Church brings to the Protestant Reformation and to the world today is this difference of having faith in Jesus or having the faith of Jesus. Do you want to meet Jesus after you die or do you want to meet Jesus while you're still alive? Do you want to see Him coming back? Do you want to be that last generation who has gained a victory and have come so close to Christ that when the world looks at you, they don't see you anymore, but they see a perfect reflection Amen. of Jesus Christ? That's the faith of Jesus. That's what God is calling us to have and to show the world. The question is, is do you believe that we can actually do it? Gary? Well, one of the things, you know, this, this strikes home to me. I've been reading... Uh, Bizarre of Ages, a chapter on Calvary. That's a new thing I like to do this every day. Okay. And one of the main things that it brings out is Christ is on the cross. He feels like, well, doesn't feel like, the whole world's sin from the beginning to the end is pressing down on him. The divine presence of his Father God has been withdrawn mm -hmm. from him. And he feels alone. He doesn't, he can't, Look, as they put it, see through the portals of death. Yes. But And he lets out, God, why have you forsaken me? Yes. But a little later, he remembers. He knows God. He knows his Father better than anybody. He knows his character. He knows all the aspects. But this is a point I think is important. For us, we have to know something to believe it. Amen. We, we need to learn these things and believe it. Well, finally, Christ realized what his father was through his life. And he just says, not my will, Lord, but yours. He knew he could trust him. He knew he could count on him 100%. And he let himself go, let him let himself be taken, his soul be taken up. The last word that Jesus said was, Father, into thy hands yep. I commit my spirit. Right? Into thy hand. Again, the faith of Jesus. 
We need to study it more, understand what it means, and then practice it in our lives to show the world that we're not just another denomination. God doesn't need another one. God only needs one, and that is to proclaim a message to prepare our people to meet Jesus in life. That's what we're called for. The closing in this morning is hymn number 309.